2020 saw some pretty cool smartphone trends, huge batteries and the thickening of devices, the removal of moving parts a la the motorized camera module and some fantastic value smartphones from many manufacturers. But the year is coming to an end and we'd like to speculate what is going to happen next year. So uh, sit back and relax. Today we're going to talk about the smartphone trends that you can expect to see in 2021. I think the first and most jarring trend that we've seen recently is Apple's return to squared off edges. I think we'll see more manufacturers do this and maybe we'll see some great designs with this style implemented. What do you think about the squared off design? We've only really seen it from Apple very recently and which smartphones would you like to see with that design implemented? Similarly, I think that mini phones could make a comeback. You guys remember the Sony Compact series and obviously with the iPhone 12 mini, a lot of manufacturers like to kind of follow Apple. And so maybe we'll see a return to like the S21e because the S10e was such a cool smartphone. And maybe we'll see a return to those kind of smartphones. They're more pocketable, they're more easily used with one hand. And for those with smaller hands, they make for better smartphones. I also think that we'll see an easing off of the throttle for super high-end flagships. So Samsung had the S20, the S20+, Plus, the S20 Ultra, the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra and if you want to include it, the S20 FE as well. That's so many smartphones for an oh, like a flagship level smartphone. And Apple again released the iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's definitely nice to have choice but it's also a lot of smartphones and a lot of them that are really a lot of money. Which kind of leads into the next point is that we'll probably continue to see some fantastic value options out there. 2020 saw lots of great budget and mid-range smartphones because a lot of the high-end stuff people just can't afford it especially amidst a pandemic like this where money's already tight it's not exactly the most sensible thing in the world to go and spend a thousand dollars on a smartphone this year we had the brilliant pixel 4a the pretty good oneplus nord the poco x3 nfc and phones like that if we could see more of that stuff, that would be fantastic. I feel like smartphones are just going to go that way for a little while now. We have to mention Huawei, right? I mean, the Biden administration is coming into power and everything. Maybe we'll see a return from Huawei. Maybe we'll see them get GMS and Google Play services again. Wouldn't that be great? Another contender, another opportunity to get something that's really high end, but that isn't a Samsung or isn't an Apple device. More choice is good for the consumer after all. From the ultra high end, it would be great to see smartphones with more like uniform bezel. So we saw the Pixel 5 implement this where it's just one continually thick or thin bezel right around the outside with a punch hole. And it's been the same with iPhones for a little while now, although they do have that big notch at the top. On a similar note, I think we'll see an implementation of an in-display selfie camera on like a normal flagship smartphone and not something that's super out there. I'm thinking by the end of the year, maybe we'll even see it on something like a OnePlus device. Refinements to foldable should make them a lot more viable in 2021. We're thinking better chipsets, more high refresh rate displays, and way better cameras because it seems like cameras are kind of a weak point for foldable smartphones. That's in battery life, of course. More batteries and maybe a thicker design would be pretty cool. And maybe someone like HTC or Nokia would come out with something different and add something to the mix because right now we've only really got them from Huawei, Samsung, and Motorola. David already made a video on what to really expect from the Snapdragon 888 series chipset with its way better cameras and stuff like that. And in a nutshell, what we're getting is potential for 10-bit video, potential for more Ultra HD 120 FPS slow motion, the ability to shoot three photos at once with very minimal lag, and up to 84 megapixel photos with zero shutter lag. 2021 is looking promising for smartphones and we can't wait to see what comes out next year. For now though, I've been Ryan Thomas. Please do leave a like and comment. Let us know what you think we're going to see next year. Whilst you're there, hit subscribe to never miss a video like this one. And uh, I'll catch you later.